This episode of Making a Chef is brought to you by Broadcast Media Group is a full-service production company with a team of storytellers who create commercials, promos, web-based videos, and more. For more information about Broadcast Media Group, go to www.getbmg.com or call 662-324-2489. Video Magic One transfers home videos, tapes, and photos into DVD, CD, or digital files. For more information, go to www.videomagicone.com or call 662-320-9344. Gadgets. Whether they're old and slow like these computers or new and fast like our phones, they're one of the most versatile things we use in our everyday lives. Some people might not know, but there are such things as culinary gadgets. Well, today I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite ones and how they help me make an easy and delicious meal. Sous vide is a type of low temperature cooking. What that means is you have a water bath that is controlled by this magic wand right here. It heats or cools the water to your desired temperature set right here. The way sous vide gets so perfect results is because it cooks the food all the way through to one temperature. In conventional methods, if you take it off too soon or too late, it's overcooked or undercooked. Not in sous vide. You can leave this up in here for six hours, perfectly cooked. Sous vide started shining in the 1970s when French restaurateurs discovered that when you cooked foie gras in a sous vide water bath, it came out with a better texture and had less fat that melted away, which is the whole point of foie gras. But in the 21st century, more and more sous vide options became available for us consumers to buy and use. They're less expensive than the restaurant ones, but just as good, in some cases, even better. So now it's time to cook a steak. So say for instance you bought yourself prime cuts of steak. This is where sous vide shines. All you have to do, set your water bath to the temperature you want, walk away. All you have to, walk away. I start off by seasoning it with salt and pepper. The simpler the better in my opinion. Steak does not need a whole lot of help. Flip it over and do the same for the back. Put it in your bag. Right here I have some oregano and some rosemary. What I like to do to create a faux vacuum sealer is seal it up almost all the way, leave a tiny little gap, open it up, stick it in there, put it almost all the way up right to that gap so the water will displace the air and it is really hot. It's 120 degrees right now. Boom. So, a little better seal than normal. Of course, vacuum machines are very useful and they work very well in sous vide. Sous vide is named after it, by the way. But doing stuff like this, simple as that. All you need is a sous vide machine, plastic bag, this is just a regular old bag, meat, and a container. We actually started off using this big old trash can and we still use it whenever we're doing big pieces of meat. But this is a lot nicer for television. What we like to do is put a top over our container. Right here, this is built in for our exact machine, which is very nice, but if we didn't have that, we'd lay plastic wrap over top. So, set your desired temperature. I want 128 degrees, so it's 120 degrees right now. Press the play button. Once the bath is preheated, I'll show you what to do next. This thing just beeped in total, so it's time to go. So, this is the kicker right here. I'm just playing, but it's as simple as that. Put it in there, walk away. I like to cook my steaks two hours, so that gives me time to prepare all the sides or relax or do whatever I want. Come back, four hours, still perfectly cooked. Six hours, perfectly cooked. Take it out, sear it, you're done. Perfectly cooked steak. So I'm gonna leave this here, and I'll come back in two hours, and I'll show you how to finish it. It's just been two hours, and now it's time to take the steak out. A little bit of juice has come out. Doesn't look pretty, I'll tell you that right now. Sous vide never looks pretty, 
but it's what we do afterwards that makes it a showstopper. Sylvie is not all about steak and meat though. It does vegetables really well. And one of those vegetables is asparagus. See, when you cook asparagus, if it's undercooked, it's hard, it's kind of rubbery, it's like, it's bad, you, you don't want that. Sous vide cooks it perfectly. I have it set to 180 degrees. I have one bunch of trimmed and washed asparagus, trimmed about an inch and a half off. Dump them in a plastic bag, same as the steak, except this time, about two tablespoons of butter, because butter makes everything better. A little bit of lemon juice, drop the lemon in there. Go heavy on the salt and pepper. We have everything loaded up, now drop it in. Try to get as much of it submerged as you can. It is very hot water. 180 degrees, 10 minutes, and you'll be rewarded with perfectly cooked asparagus. It's been 10 minutes, and now it's time to take them out. So you can already tell they looked cooked. Nice amount of butter in there. Oh yeah, those look good. Hollandaise is a very classic brunch sauce used in dishes like Eggs Benedict, but it can be very tricky to make. Using sous vide, it is a breeze. All you have to do is put the ingredients in a bag and cook it and walk away. To start off with this hollandaise, I need five egg yolks. This recipe is not low fat, low carb, low anything. It's high in flavor. A fourth a cup of water right here, just shy of that. About a teaspoon or so of smoked paprika. You can use regular paprika, I prefer smoked, different depth of flavor. You will need a lot of lemon juice. So right here, about one and a half lemons. One of Hollandaise's key attributes is a lot of lemon. So go heavy on it. I'm gonna save this last half for the end product in case I need to add some more because you can't take away, only add more. Duh. Heavy pinch of salt. This is not the low fat part at all. So this is six tablespoons of butter. You can use more butter for a more velvety sauce, but I think this will be enough because there's a lot of fat in these egg yolks and there's a lot of fat in this butter. This will be a very, very velvety sauce. And I'm gonna use a new kitchen tool to make it even more velvety. So, same as usual, just place it in the water. Put the top on, cook it at 167 degrees for 30 minutes until everything is melted and then we're gonna blend it up. The Hollandaise sous vide at 167 for 30 minutes. Now it's time to take it out and mix it. I'm gonna get rid of this water bath, plug in the mixer, and we can start mixing it up. Right now this is like unshaken salad dressing. We have fat on the top and water-like liquid in the bottom. Dump everything in. Now it's time to mix it up. Smells good. Looks good. That's good. Needs a little more salt, not a ton. A little more lemon juice. I don't want to add it all in because again, you can't take it out. You can always add some in. Blend it up and taste for seasonings again. That is very good. This next kitchen gadget is very specific. It is a cream whipper, or as a more technical term, it's a siphon and pretty much it does what it's in its name. It whips stuff up. You load your mixture right here into the hopper, screw on the lid, take a nitrogen jar, stick in a little container, screw it on till the seal pops, and then it charges it up. and makes it fluffy, and it whips it. Who would've thought, whipping siphon? So now add the hollandaise directly into here. Now, this is an optional step. I'm just using the siphon to get it extra fluffy. So, make sure you have the seal in because trust me, if you don't have the seal on it, it'll explode everywhere. Load it with one nitrogen canister. Thread it on carefully, because if you misthread it, it's bad. It's bad mojo. Heard that? Now shake it vigorously for like a minute. All right, once it's shaken, you can store it in a 150 degree water bath using your sous vide machine so it won't break. The water bath will keep it emulsified by some magic science mojo that I don't understand, but you can serve it right now if you're ready to do that. Now it's time to plate everything up. This is my favorite way to finish a sous vide steak. What I like to do is I like to preheat a cast iron pan for at least five minutes to get it ripping hot. Once that's going, take your steak out and leave the herbs and juices in there if you can. We're gonna add those in in a second. You hear that? It should it sizzles like that. 
on contact, good to go. Let this sear a minute to two minutes on each side till you have a desired crust. While this is searing, I have two garlic cloves that I wanna crack. They're still in the paper, that doesn't matter. So I'm gonna do, take a knife, smash it like that. There you go. Time to check the steak. That has a beautiful sear on it. Let this go for 30 seconds, then we're gonna baste it. All right, the steak has been searing for about 30 seconds on the second side. So we're gonna add in about two tablespoons of butter, the garlic, skin and all, the juice and the herbs that we use to sous vide it in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a towel, wrap it around the handle, and we're gonna baste the steak. Take a spoon, have all the juice to the side, just start basting. Let the steak finish cooking, and then we'll let it rest for five minutes, and then we can plate everything up. While the steak is resting for five minutes, add the asparagus back in the pan to freshen it up a little bit. Go ahead and add the lemon and all the juice in it. We have enough residual heat to carry over, so I'm just gonna turn off the heat and let it finish cooking. Let's take a minute to admire that. This is all cooked with high-tech gear. It's not my most beautiful presentation ever, but flavor's gonna be there. So, time to dispense the hollandaise. That looks delicious. This is not your typical hollandaise sauce. The texture is not the same, but we made it without even stressing. So, it's time to dig in. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what sous vide can do. Technology isn't always bad. It might seem scary and kinda hard to understand, but work with it, you'll get great results. Our next gadget is the Instapot. Unlike sous vide, Instapot is all about speed. This is a combination pressure cooker and slow cooker, and it's a bunch of extra stuff. It's a very good tool to have. So, how does the Instapot work, you may ask? Let's take a look from the top down. The Instapot utilizes a stainless steel cooking vessel. This is waterproof and dishwasher safe. This is where all the food goes, but this is where the magic happens. Right here is the heating element. Throughout here, there's a computer all around. This is a very smart machine. If you set it to steam, it'll steam. If you set it to saute, it'll saute. But how is this a pressure cooker, one might ask? It looks just like a crock pot. The magic is in the seal and the auto locking system. All you have to do, boom, you lock in place. If for some reason it's not sealed correctly, you set go, it won't even go. It'll display a message to alert you about the problem. It is insanely smart. I'm going to make three different dishes utilizing the Instapot. The first one is ribs. It's time to start cooking the ribs, and that starts off with seasoning them. So it's just some chili powder, chili with an eye, salt, pepper, garlic powder, mustard powder, and dark brown sugar. Also, it has smoked paprika in it. Massage your ribs, work that rub in. We have 15 ribs, so now it's time to cut them into thirds to fit into the Instapot. So we counted one, two, three, four, five. There's one third. Oh yeah. Before I go any further, I'm gonna wash my hands to prevent cross-contamination. Now it's time to put the ribs into the Instant Pot. This is a cup of chicken broth, a quarter cup or so of apple juice. You can use apple cider vinegar if you'd like. About a teaspoon and a half of liquid smoke. Ribs are usually always smoked, so we're using liquid smoke to get that smoky flavor. So you can see, we also have the steamer-like basket in here because we're gonna steam it. Now it's time to lay the ribs in the Instant Pot vertically. We are steaming, not boiling, so it's important for these not to touch the water. Again, time to clean the hands. Now it's time to cook the ribs. Make sure your vent is closed to sealing position. To cook your ribs, go to the manual setting on the Instant Pot interface. Make sure it's on high pressure and put 23 minutes. Don't touch it, wait 10 seconds. It's ready to cook. Now, 
walk away. Exactly like sous vide, walk away. 23 minutes, it will be done. And I'll show you how to release the pressure when we get there. The ribs cooked for 23 minutes, and now it is naturally releasing the pressure for 15 minutes. You may ask, what is natural release? Well, there's two different types of releases in pressure cookers. Natural release, which means it gently dissipates its pressure by itself. Force release is the second form. That is when you physically force the air to get out of there. On the Instapot, you do that by opening the steam valve right here. So that's what we're gonna do. Make sure you have a hot pad or a towel or something. We're gonna move this valve to the venting position till all the steam is gone and the red indicator is all the way down. A little bit of steam and all that is natural. Mmm, smells like barbecue. So you can press down a little indicator. Give it a minute or so in the open position till all the steam is gone and you cannot hear a hissing noise. The valve has been open for a minute. Now it's time to check the ribs. And always pull up away from you because you don't even avoid the steam. And in case there might be a little pressure, you want this to block yourself. Take the ribs out and put them on aluminum foil lined sheet. Mmm, these are tender. Mmm-hmm. Can't even get a grip on this last one. Oh. There's a bone. That's to show how tender they are. The ribs are now done cooking, but they need some more flavor on it. We're brushing these down with our favorite barbecue sauce, and we're gonna put them under the broiler for about 10 minutes until they're nice and brown. The broiler caramelizes the sugar in the sauce, creating a nice golden brown crust. All right, those look delicious. Let the ribs cool for five minutes or until they don't burn your fingers off. The ribs have cooled down a little bit and they look beautiful. So, I'm gonna slice into them. Mmm. It's just fall off the bone tender. For having an under 25 minute cook time, these are amazing. Mmm. That's how you make quick and easy and finger licking good ribs with the Instapot. So imagine you're in a situation, you have a beautiful steak just about to come off the grill, but you don't have any potatoes. And what is steak without potatoes? Well, if you have an Instant Pot, you're good to go. Conventionally, baked potato takes about an hour plus. This only has 13 minutes of cooking in the Instant Pot. So it all starts off with a cup of cold water, and that's it. Make sure the potatoes don't touch the water because you do not want to boil them. You want to steam them. Slide it on, set to manual. Go all the way down, 13 minutes. Wait 10 seconds. Potatoes cooked for 13 minutes and they've been naturally releasing for eight minutes. As soon as the red indicator goes down, wait at least a minute to be sure all the pressure is gone. Just like that, you have perfectly cooked potatoes. Now it's time to evacuate them. Be sure to use tongs because these are very hot. A Little bit of olive oil to promote browning. And then I do just a first layer, spread them around. 400 degree oven, eight to 10 minutes till they have a crispy skin. All right, see if they'll split open. Oh yeah, perfect texture. I love baked potato. That is a well cooked baked potato. It's amazing how fast and efficient the Instapot can be. Risotto is an Italian dish that can take upwards of 45 minutes to create. With the Instant Pot, all you need is about 15 minutes of prep, 10 minutes of cooking, and you come out with an amazing risotto. I'm doing a mushroom risotto today. That starts off with mushrooms. Now that the mushrooms are done, I'm gonna lightly smash four cloves of garlic. Keep smashing it, it pulverizes it. Makes it easier to mince. Do that with all four cloves of garlic. Now we're gonna take one Vidalia onion, cut off the end, make sure it's not the root end, you wanna leave that intact. Stand it up on the cut side down, cut it through the root, and we only need half of it. Peel off the top two to three layers of the onion. Next, take your knife, put one finger on the bottom, pinch it, wrap your fingers around the handle. This is a sturdy grip for your knife. Go parallel to the cutting board. Go almost all the way through. Want to leave just a little bit of space left. Do that another two to three times to create different layers. Next, turn your onion 90 degrees so the root end is facing away from you. 
Take your fingers and create a pattern like this. Then slice down, doing your best not to cut all the way through the onion. Make sure you go all the way down and then pull your knife out. Like that. Near the end, your onion will start falling apart, so grip it and continue chopping. Then turn the onion another 90 degrees so the root is facing to your left. And then take your knife, same grip, just chop. There you go. Now that we have our mise en place done, it's time to go to the Instapot. Click the saute feature on the Instapot. Add a tablespoon of olive oil. Wait until the olive oil starts to shimmer. Then add in your onion and your mushrooms. You should hear a nice sizzle as soon as you add the onion into the pot. Now do the same for the mushrooms. Let everything saute three to four minutes or until the onions are slightly caramelized and the mushrooms have shrunk down some. Season now with a little bit of salt to inhibit moisture loss. The mushrooms and onions will be going for three to four minutes. The onions have a little bit of color on them, mushrooms are shrunk down some, and you're starting to smell the onions. So, I'm gonna add the garlic. Let this saute for another minute or so, or till you start smelling garlic. Now that your aromatics have caramelized, add in one cup of arborio rice, or similar Italian style rices. You don't want long grain, you want short grain. The starch is different in short grain compared to long grain. You want to let your rice brown for two minutes or so until you start to smell a nuttiness in the air. The rice is starting to smell nutty and it's taking on a color. So now it's time to add two cups of chicken stock. If you want to add any extra aromatics, now is the time. Put the lid on, cancel the saute, go to manual, high pressure, put it on high pressure for six minutes and that's it. Normally, you'd stand over the stove for 30 plus minutes at a time. None of that. Put everything in here and walk away. The Instapot just got done cooking for six minutes. Now it's time to depressurize it. And we're doing a quick release right now. We're not gonna wait for it to naturally release. We're doing this by ourselves. We're forcing it. Like we've done before, as soon as the red indicator goes down, wait a minute to make sure all pressure has been released. Mmm, that looks delicious. We're trying to stay as true to the classics as we can, so that involves some white wine. Go ahead, hit cancel. Hit the saute feature. Let it sit for 10 seconds. And as soon as it beeps, go ahead and add about half a cup of white wine. All we're doing now is adding a little heat to cook off some of the alcohol, create one homogenous dish. Alcohol needs to cook off for just a second more. To finish it off, we're gonna add half a lemon. We're gonna add a quarter cup or so of grated fresh Parmesan. Always use fresh Parmesan if you have access to it. Turn off the saute feature. Mix everything together. And this is what's gonna take the risotto to the next level. This is imported truffles and mushrooms. So, add about a teaspoon of this, maybe a little less. Yeah, about that much, because this is very strong stuff. That is very, very good. That's how you make easy, delicious, and simple risotto. Traditionally, this takes over 45 minutes to make, but I got this done in under 20 minutes. It's amazing what technology can do. I'm at the Boys and Girls Club of Columbus, Mississippi. I'm gonna show them how to make an easy Southwestern style soup using the crock pot, one of the most versatile and popular kitchen gadgets of all time. It's nice to reach out to kids and show them, you know, the, the health benefits of eating healthy and how delicious it can be. And this is also a really quick and simple and fairly cheap thing to do. I'm going to give him the floor so he can tell you things that he wants to share about his experience or whatever it is that you want them to know about you. Hey, y'all. My name is Mark Koblenz, and I love to cook. So I started off cooking when I was some of y'all's age, about 9 or 10. Pretty much what I'm here is to show y'all how to make a Southwestern style soup. So I'm gonna leave the root end intact. What I'm gonna do is slice off this end right here. Should leave you like two halves like this. 
And so all you wanna do is just peel off the outer two to three layers of skin until you see the white interior flesh. Perfect, just like that. You might notice your eyes are starting to water. Uh, that's just what onions do. So you can just dump everything in. So we want to give a big thank you to Martha Chef right over here for coming and doing this demonstration. Y'all, give it Just taking out time um, to come back and invest in our hometown here in Mississippi and give back to our kids. So big thank you uh, to you. I had a great time at the Boys and Girls Club of Columbus. The kids are great, and they did an amazing job cooking up the food. I hope they enjoy it, and I can't wait to do it again next year.